The Boy Who Walked Backwards by Ben Suris and illustrated by Nicole Marie Burton. Leo was an Ojibwe boy from Serpent River First Nation in northern Ontario. He lived there with his mom, dad, and little brother. Leo lived a traditional Ojibwe life with home-cooked meals, splishy-splashy baths once a week, and bedtime stories that made him dream of adventure. Behind Leo's house was a tall, dense forest. He and his friends spent a lot of time there. They played all kinds of games. One of his favorites was Nagi Gaza, or what some people call hide-and-seek. Leo and his friends played Nagi Gaza in the forest among the black spruce and birch trees. Leo was very good at playing Nagi Gaza. He could stand perfectly still. His friends would run past him and not even know he was there until he jumped out and said boo. One day, strangers came to Serpent River. They had squawky voices that sounded like unhappy magpies. The strangers read from scrolls of paper. We have come to collect all the Ojibwe children so they may become educated. Leo and his friends were loaded into the back of a rickety old cattle truck. They were brought to a school run by nuns, covered from head to toe in black and white clothing. The nuns did things that made Leo and the other children feel very uncomfortable, like cutting their long black hair short. Their ears stuck out, and when the wind blew, the backs of their necks tickled. The nuns made the children sit at wooden desks in a stuffy room and speak in a language they weren't used to. It made their tongues sore and their jaws ache. They began to feel very sad and homesick. To feel better, Leo and his friends huddled in a circle and whispered in Ojibwe when the nuns weren't watching. They talked about their families, their beds at home, and playing Nagi Gaza in the forest. This made them giggle quietly. One day, the nuns announced all the children would go home for Christmas. They told the children that Christmas is the birthday of the baby Jesus. As a man, Jesus was so special, he could keep his long, dark hair. Leo was happy about Christmas because it meant he was going home to see his family. He missed them a lot. The nuns brought Leo and the other children back to their families. At home they ate good food, spoke in Ojibwe, and played in the forest among the tall trees. Leo decided he wanted to stay home after Christmas. He did not want to return to the school, but he needed a plan. The Christmas holiday went by quickly. Soon there was only one day left before the children would be collected. They decided to have one last game of Nagi Gaza in the forest. It was Leo's turn to hide. He stood very still behind a tree and stayed silent. One of Leo's friends walked right past him, and their footsteps made loud, crunching noises in the snow. Leo stared at the footprints, and they gave him an idea. The sky began to darken, and snow started to fall. Leo and the other children headed home for one last good meal with their families. The snow fell until morning. The next day, Leo got up very early. He did not want to wake his family, so he quietly put on his moccasins, mitts, and jacket, and then stepped outside. Leo turned to face the house and started walking backwards through the freshly fallen snow. He walked all the way to the tree line and continued deep into the forest. Just like when he played Nagi Gaza, Leo waited silently and stayed still. Eventually, he heard the cattle truck arrive at his family's house. He could hear the voices of his friends in the back of the truck. Then, he heard a magpie-like voice squawking out his name. Leo Day! Where is Leo Day? 
The truck driver walked around the yard looking for some sign of the boy, but all he could find were tracks in the snow that looked like they came out of the forest. The driver pointed at the tracks and said to the nun, There's no sign of the boy, just these tracks coming out of the forest. He can't be in there. Leo's parents shrugged their shoulders and made question mark faces. The nun's face turned red, and she let out a frustrated and grumpy-sounding harumph. The people from the truck glanced around the yard one last time and then drove away. Once the sound of the cattle truck had faded in the distance, Leo let out a huge sigh and ran out of the forest, up the steps, and into the arms of his surprised mother and father who gave him big happy hugs. They brought him inside, wrapped him in a blanket, and gave him a cup of tea so he could warm up. Leo smiled. Leo grew up to have many children. He learned to play the fiddle, became a respected elder and counselor in Serpent River First Nation, and he always got a sore tongue and an achy jaw whenever he had to speak English. The End Closed his eyes The last full blood from Serpent River The boy who fooled the nuns and did not show The last of a kind There will be none left behind The boy who walked backwards through the snow As a child, they dragged him off to residential school where they cut his hair and told him what language to speak. He and his buddies would farm secret huddles, whisper the words of their mother tongue.